Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Instinct Bassin. This is Rob. Thanks so much for tuning in. In this video, we're going to go over some ways to make these units look better than they do right out of the box. In other words, just go over some settings that I like to, to, um, to change them from. Um, they do look good out of the box. Now, I've got this one in simulator mode just because I am on the water and I'm in a foot of water. So it really won't show much while I'm sitting still in one foot of water. So I did go ahead and put it in simulator mode for what it's worth. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I like to do is this is the rusted steel um, color palette. I don't tend to like it very much. Um, so the first thing I do is change this to the amber color. And the way you do that, it's going to vary on your units, but th this is the 106 SV. The 93 SV and the 73 SV will be very similar and the 126 as well. Um, this is not one of the newer UHD units, um, but the setups should be pretty similar. Um, so I'm just going to go in here to oops, uh, color scheme. And then I usually change it to this amber color right here. There we go. And I just feel like this gives me a better picture. It's a little crisper in my mind. Um, the only downfall to this one over or instead of that rusted steel one is since the rusted steel color palette is different colors, it's the, that blue and that, and that uh, orange, um, it will tend to show harder bottoms possibly a little bit better because of the two different colors. Here you're going to have to pay attention to the brighter return here. Um, but in overall, I like this amber color pattern most of the, most of the time. I use this 99% of the time. So that's the first thing I like to do. Okay, and then the second thing I like to do is change the brightness. They you typically come out of the box with the brightness set on auto medium or auto high or one of those auto settings. I like to kick it up a little bit. Um, brightness for, for if you don't know on Garmin units or on um, UHD units, I should say is the same as gain on other units and it's the same as gain on the 2D function of this. So in this case, it'll be called brightness. Try not to confuse that with the backlight, which is a different type of brightness setting. But I like to up that a little bit. I'll go to menu and then brightness here and then see how it's on that auto medium. I just go ahead and kick that up to about 96-ish and then hit done. You may not be able to tell a big difference here, but it will just give you a crisper return in my in my opinion. Um, play with that function as much as you like. And then of course you can also play with the contrast as well. This one, it come out of the box just set on this default setting, which is here in the middle. I like to go ahead and up that a little bit too and see how it, it, go ahead, it, it makes this crisper as I do that. Here, I'll kick it back down again. But just play with that setting depending on um, what you're looking at and what you're looking for. I like to kick it on about 70% roughly. And keep in mind, these are just settings that I play with. Um, you'll have to manage them on your body of water as well. But um, this is just a good idea to where to get started. All right, so those prior settings were all about clear view. Now we're getting into side view. Um, I did have to take it out of simulator mode because otherwise you wouldn't really be able to see the changes that I make here. Um, so let's go into some of those things that you can do. Now again, you can go and mess with the brightness and the um, contrast. So play with that as much as you like. I like to keep the brightness on around 85 or so on uh, side view. Um, now, if you'll notice, now I'm in a flat um, bottom, so you're not going to see a whole lot of, of structure right here. Um, but if you'll notice, this is a pretty bright return, and there's a couple of ways you can either, besides just changing the brightness itself, you can change the frequency and, and a couple of other things to make this picture uh, brighter like this. Um, to change the frequency, just go into here and then here where it says menu and then frequency. And again, these will be a little bit different depending on the unit, but this is how you do it on the 106. Um, go into frequency here and you got a, a choice between 455 and 1120. 
1120 will usually give you a sharper image, but 455 will typically give you a brighter image, um, and especially at shorter distances. Now, see, I've only got mine at 50 feet. Um, so let's tick that to 1120 and then hit back. And as you'll see, see how it's a lot darker? You can really tell right there's where I switched it. But you'll see the image is a lot sharper as well, though. So depending on what setting you're looking for, change that between 1120 and 455. I usually like to use the 1120 because I like that sharper return, but if I don't feel like I'm getting a bright enough return or if I'm not getting enough range, then I will, you know, don't be afraid to shoot it to that 455. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to use the lower setting. It's not necessarily lower, it's just a different kilohertz and it has a different function on it. So just keep that in mind. Um, let's shoot it back to the 455 and let me point something else out as you see it got brighter again once you put it on the 455 it can get very cloudy um, at times and there's a couple of different things you can address I've already done it so that's why it doesn't look cloudy here but go into sonar setup and then hit this advanced button and then you'll see this TVG um, high that's what I have mine on it's called time varying gain and you'll notice if I turn it off you see what happens it gets very muddled up and it makes this middle line a lot bigger now I won't try to pretend I know why that happens I just like to play with it until I get the best picture um, if you put it on medium you'll see it clears it up a little bit And then if I put it on high, it clears that middle section up quite a bit. And see, now I've got good definition to where I can see things like this. It doesn't seem to have as much effect on the 1120 setting. It doesn't seem to have as much effect on the 1120 setting. So when I change that back to 1120. Now when I change this TFG or TVG. See it still muddles it up some but it's not quite as bad as it was on the 455. Um, so in any case, I like to keep that TVG at high, time varying gain. Again, that might differ on your body of water, but if you're noticing a bunch of stuff in here in the, in the water column, that's one area to go to is that advanced setting and then turn the time varying gain on high. Again, your installation may differ, but those are just some things that I have found. All right, so I hope that helps you out. Um, also, you know, be sure to um, keep in mind that your sonar is always going to look better when you're moving. You know, I'm not moving right now. That's why this is just kind of flat. Um, granted, there's not a lot to look at here anyway. Um, this is just a, a Florida lake, so there's just nothing but grass down there. But um, just keep those in mind. Play with that brightness contrast. Change that setting, color setting from the rusted steel to amber is what I like and then play around with your time varying gain as well to clean up this water column here. All right, thanks so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe. This is Rob from Instinct Bassin. Trust your gut and I'll see you on the water.